Hello and welcome to the training video for the routine use of the BioFire Film Array Tropical Fever Panel. This video will discuss the setup, loading, interpretation, and quality control requirements for the Tropical Fever Panel. At the end of this training, you will be able to discuss the intended use and sample requirements for the BioFire Tropical Fever Panel, review setup of the pouch and loading onto the BioFire Film Array Torch System, review and interpret results, and discuss quality control requirements for the panel. The Tropical Fever Panel is intended for use in detecting and identifying bacterial, viral, and protozoan nucleic acids directly from EDTA whole blood collected from individuals with signs and or symptoms of current or recent acute febrile illness and known or suspected exposure to the target pathogens. The Tropical Fever Panel is performed directly on human whole blood collected in EDTA. A minimum volume of 200 microliters is required. Do not use samples that have clotted and do not centrifuge samples. Samples should be tested as soon as possible. If storage is required, samples can be held up to one day at room temperature and seven days if refrigerated. The Tropical Fever Panel requires a pouch module software update to run. This software can be downloaded online and self-installed. Always wear appropriate personal protective equipment, or PPE, including, but not limited to, disposable clean powder-free gloves and a lab coat. Be sure to protect your skin, eyes, and mucous membranes. Samples should be processed in a clean biosafety cabinet if available or according to local laboratory guidelines. If a biosafety cabinet is not used, a dead air box, a splash shield, or a face shield can be used when preparing samples instead. Process samples in a dedicated work area. Clean the area and pouch loading station with 10% bleach and wipe disinfected areas with water. Handle samples one at a time always changing gloves between samples. Use clean gloves when removing reagents from bulk packaging bags and reseal bulk packaging bags when not in use. The sample injection vials come individually packaged in a foil pouch. Remove the sample injection vial by tearing or cutting the notched packaging and opening the pouch. Place a red capped sample injection vial into the red well of the pouch loading station, taking care not to touch the inside cover of the red sample vial. Place a blue-capped hydration injection vial into the blue well of the pouch loading station. To prepare the pouch, remove the pouch from its vacuum-sealed package by tearing or cutting the notched outer packaging and opening the protective canister. Check the expiration date on the pouch. Do not use expired pouches. Insert the pouch into the pouch loading station, aligning the red and blue labels on the pouch with the red and blue arrows on the pouch loading station. To hydrate the pouch, unscrew the hydration injection vial from the blue cap and remove the hydration injection vial, leaving the blue cap in the pouch loading station. Insert the hydration injection vial's cannula tip into the hydration port located directly below the blue arrow of the pouch loading station. Forcefully push down in a firm and quick motion to puncture the seal until a faint pop is heard and there is an ease and resistance. Wait as the correct volume of the hydration solution is pulled into the pouch by vacuum. Verify that the pouch has been hydrated by checking to see that the fluid has entered the reagent wells located at the base of the pouch. Small air bubbles may be seen. The leftmost well will remain dry at this time and will be hydrated in the next step. If the pouch fails to hydrate and the reagents still appear to be dry white pellets, 
Attempt to rehydrate the pouch by pushing down on the hydration injection vial to verify that the seal of the pouch hydration port was broken. If the hydration solution is still not drawn into the pouch, discard the current pouch and retrieve a new pouch to prepare. To prepare the sample mix, gently invert the whole blood container until thoroughly mixed. Draw the blood sample up to the second line of the transfer pipette and add it to the sample injection vial. Discard the transfer pipette in a biohazard waste container. Hold the sample buffered ampule with the tip facing up. Firmly pinch at the textured plastic tab on the side of the ampule until the seal snaps. The sample buffer vial may also come with a plastic tab on the tip. To open these vials, gently twist and remove the tab at the tip. Invert the ampule and dispense the entire volume of the sample buffer into the sample injection vial. Avoid touching the tip of the buffer ampule to the inside of the sample injection vial. Tightly close the sample injection vial. Remove the sample injection vial from the pouch loading station and invert the vial at least three times to mix. Then return the sample injection vial to the pouch loading station. Slowly twist to unscrew the sample injection vial from the red cap and wait for five seconds with the vial resting in the cap to decrease the risk of dripping and contamination from the sample. Lift the sample injection vial, leaving the red cap in the well of the pouch loading station and insert the sample injection vial cannula tip into the pouch sample port located directly below the red arrow of the pouch loading station. Forcefully push down in a firm and quick motion to puncture the seal until a faint pop is heard and the sample is pulled into the pouch by vacuum. Verify that the sample has been loaded. If the pouch fails to pull sample from the sample injection vial, the pouch should be discarded and a new pouch retrieved to be set up. Discard the sample injection vial and hydration injection vial in the appropriate biohazard sharps container. Label the pouch and remove the pouch from the pouch loading station. You may need to install a software update to enable the usage of the Tropical Fever panel. This software can be downloaded online and self-installed. If you need more information on this process, speak with your BUMERU representative. To load the pouch, select an available module on the touch screen. Scan the pouch barcode to automatically enter the pouch identification information. Enter the sample ID by typing it in manually or scanning a sample ID barcode. Insert the pouch into the selected module. As the pouch is inserted, the module will grab onto the pouch and pull it into the chamber. Follow any additional prompts on the screen, including logging in with a username and password. Then select Next. Review the entered run information on the screen, then select Start Run to begin the run. Results are meant to be used in conjunction with other clinical, epidemiologic, and laboratory data in accordance with guidelines provided by the relevant public health authorities. Nationally notifiable results are to be reported to the public health authorities in accordance with local, state, and federal law. In the United States, all pathogens on this panel must be reported to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Detailed information regarding organism reporting can be found in the instructions for use. The BioFire Film Array Tropical Fever Panel Test Report is automatically displayed upon completion of a run. Each report contains a run summary, a results summary, and a run details section. The BioFire Film Array Tropical Fever Panel contains three plasmodium assays, one genus level assay and two species level assays. This test cannot differentiate co-infections other than Plasmodium falciparum and Plasmodium vivax ovale. Infection with additional Plasmodium species is always possible and should be considered. Refer to the instructions for use for more information. Two process controls are included in each pouch. Both control assays must be positive for the test run to pass. When either control fails, the controls field of the test report will display failed and all the results will be listed as invalid. 
If the controls fail, the sample should be retested using a new pouch. Note that the detection of two or more unique pathogens may indicate a possible contamination event. Follow the instructions in the result banner for retesting. If the two or more positive results are not duplicated, contact BMRU technical support and discontinue testing until the test area has been decontaminated. External controls should be used in accordance with laboratory protocols and the appropriate accrediting organization requirements as applicable. Evaluation of external controls is recommended prior to using a new shipment or new lot of the kit, when there is a new operator, and following the replacement or repair of a biofire system. The kit should not be used in patient testing if the external controls do not produce the expected result. Positive and negative controls come in single-use vials which are used in place of the sample when setting up a pouch for quality control. Store the controls in a separate area from any unused kits according to the instructions from the manufacturer. Thank you for joining us for this BioFire Tropical Fever Panel training video. If you have any questions or concerns, refer to the instructions for use and call BMRU Technical Support.